So this video is an explanation of how to use stats plus LE for the Mac to do correlation matrices to determine the correlation coefficient between multiple variables in our data. Uh, Dr. Martin's explained uh, what the correlation coefficients mean and uh, how to interpret uh, correlations between variables. This is how to actually get it done in Excel with stat plus LE on the Mac. So first, uh, first things first, we're going to go to stat, we're going to open stat plus and under the statistics menu, under basic statistics and tables, we'll select linear correlation Pearson. And it's going to ask us to select our numeric variables. So we'll click this little button and go back to Excel. And we can get those by pressing on the first row and the last row in our analysis. So this is going to select all of our data. We're then going to return to Stat Plus, and it's going to show us that we're getting all the data from A1 to F194. We're going to tell it the labels are in the first row, and we're going to click OK. It's going to crunch some numbers for a minute and open a new window that's got our correlation coefficients matrix in it. And it gives us quite a bit of interesting information. It tells us the sample size. Uh, it gives us uh, each variable in a row and each in a column. And it'll show you the correlation coefficient for each at the top. That's the first thing. So uh, you'll notice that it goes down 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So each variable is one-to-one -one correlation with itself, which we would expect. And then uh, when it compares to another variable, for example, socializing and partying versus attending class and studying, it gives us several pieces of information. First, it gives us the correlation coefficient, so 0 .3, 0 0.03721. Uh, it gives us the standard error, the t-score or t-value, the p-value, which tells us uh, our confidence interval, and then finally whether or not we reject or accept the null hypothesis based on the value that we set it at, which in this case is a 2% confidence interval. Uh, in this case, we accept the null hypothesis, which means we can't see any particularly strong correlation between socializing and partying and attending class and studying. So there's no correlation there uh, to speak much of, or at least the correlation is very, very, very weak. Um, there's fundamentally no statistical difference. We're working for pay, we get that against these two, housework, child care, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down through, uh, through Facebook. And uh, it gives us a nice uh, picture of what we're pairing each up against. And uh, down at the bottom, it gives us the R scores for uh, each variable against another variable, Facebook versus socializing, partying, et cetera, et cetera. So you get, you get your R scores here too, which is kind of nice. Uh, so stat plus LE is a really handy tool for this sort of thing. Um, I really think that this output is super nice. Um, I think it's probably even nicer than the default output that the analysis tool pack gives you. So uh, you get a lot of information here, which I think is great. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out is when we do this, this correlation in stat plus, let me go back and run it again. Um, the linear correlation. Here on preferences, you can set things like the alpha value for the confidence interval. So if you want to be like super confident, 0.1% um, confidence interval is uh, really excellent. That's That would be a super good confidence interval for um, statistical results. That's a really like uh, a really strong hypothesis. Uh, you can set that there. You can tell it how, how it should handle missing values and missing information. Um, you can also set up things like how many decimal places you want to display in this data. So I'm just actually going to set it to display two. And also you can set like the font and font size. So you can make it look a little prettier too, if you want to, um, and use scientific notation and hide trailing zeros and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to click okay on that. Um, Let's actually set that alpha value even higher. Let's say we've got a 1% confidence interval, which means we've got a very rigorous test. 
uh, going on for whether or not we accept or reject the null hypothesis. Oftentimes results are published with a 5% confidence interval, um, but a 1% confidence interval is really uh, a good goal to strive for. That means we're 99% sure that there's a relationship as opposed to 99.9% .9 sure, which we would be here with 0.1%. But 99% is really good, significant, reportable data. So we're gonna go ahead and, and click OK here. Um, we're not, we don't have any missing values in this data set, so we don't need to worry about that. And let's go ahead and select our variables again. We're gonna go back to our student survey data. This is the data we're gonna use, so let's go back to Stat Plus. It's grabbed the data we need, and it's gonna give us a new correlation matrix. And you'll notice that there are only uh, a couple of cases where we're going to reject the null hypothesis, which means that uh, there's definitely some correlation. 99% sure that a correlation exists in certain cases. For example, there is a, a correlation between uh, attending class and studying and Facebook. So um, that's a, an interesting result uh, worth reporting. We can reject the null hypothesis um, and say that we are we're quite sure. You'll notice the p-value there is zero, so we can be. It's actually 0 0.009. So even if we were 0.1% sure, even if that were our standard, um, that this still would be accepted that this is uh, like a definite correlation between attending class and being on Facebook uh, or using Facebook for a certain number of hours per week. So that's the uh, correlation coefficient matrix in STAT+.